first thing to do is to trace around the phone. And we're going to make marks at a half centimeter and one centimeter. In a couple of different places along the edge. And then take a straight edge, like a ruler. Line it up along the three dots. And draw a line. Kind of like connect the dots, but ultra straight. Right, I'm going to do the same thing to the bottom. And then at the top, we're going to make our mark at one centimeter intervals. And again, make lines. The outside width is about ten and a half centimeters. So we are going to make another box on this side of the page that is ten and a half centimeters. by 16 centimeters. So this will be for our card pocket, and this will be for the main part of the phone case.
take your fabric lengthwise and fold it in half, lining up the edges pretty well, and then fold it in half again. All right, in your sewing kit, you have straight pins, buttons, and safety pins. Now that we've folded our fabric four times, we are going to um, use either the straight pins or the safety pins. I like using safety pins because there's less chance you're going to poke yourself. And just pin in the corners to keep the fabric from shifting and moving. All right, so now I have my design. I'm going to take my uh, template. I'm gonna put it on right in the middle. Now I can see that my folding is a little bit off on the edges. You can see right here. In fact, we could even flip this over if we wanted to, to help us lay it out. You can also see a little bit of a selvage on some of the fabrics. That's this end bit here. I think it's a little unseemly, so I'm going to position my template a little bit over so this part will, be, will not be part of my finished product. Using a regular pen, I'm just going to trace around the edge. There are special fabric pens and pencils that you can use. Um, do not use a marker that will bleed through. But you can see that I have my outline. It is a good idea to pin inside your, at least a few pins, inside your design too so that nothing shifts around while you're cutting. So once you have your phone case um, cut out, you can go ahead and open your fabric back up and you can see that we've now cut out four identical pieces in one swoop. So you can fold your fabric back up Take your, now my fabric is a little off because I was using a spare piece of material, but you will have enough. You should be able to take your card template and cut and trace it out of the remainder of the material. What I'm going to do is using my tape measure. I'm going to measure in half a centimeter on three sides.
my three sides, my three seams. I'm going to stack two of my squares so that they're even. I'm going to pin them in place. Once you have it pinned so that you can still access all the way around your seams, it's time for the first sewing part of the sewing project. Now, the kit does come with a number of threads, but I highly recommend that with these tiny amounts, you save this thread to carry with you while, in case you rip your clothing while you're um, out and about. And instead, this entire large spool of thread was only a few dollars at I think about this one at Walmart. You can also go to Michael's or BJ, not BJ's, um, Joanne's or anywhere. It's just general all-purpose thread. Color doesn't matter. When you are taking your thread off of the spool, I like to use one wingspan. That would be one arm length to either the shoulder, the center of your collarbone, or the other shoulder, depending on if you want that little bit of extra. So I'm just taking the string, with the thread rather, with one hand, and letting it unspool until I get to one wingspan. Now, most spools of thread, when you buy them, will come with Focus, focus, there we go. We'll come with a little slit in one end. This is so you can pull your thread through. And if we cut it right here, it won't unwind. So we're going to need a needle. And the way that this needle case works is there's a very small hole and you twist until the hole lines up with one of the pockets that actually holds the needle. In particular kit, it looks like all the needles are pretty much the same. So I'm just going to line the hole up with the first thing and shake out a needle. Ooh, I only got one, that was lucky going to rotate back so now the hole is on the bottom and none of the needles will get out introduce you to your best friend in this project this is a needle threader this little piece on the end is going to help you thread your needle So you can get this tiny little eye threaded properly. What you do is pinch your needle threader and hold your needle and not do it. There we go. So you put your needle threader into the eye of the needle and push it all the way down. So you can see that it's connected. And then I'm going to take my wingspan of thread. I'm going to show you a way that I just learned how to start thread that I absolutely love. So I've lined up the two ends so that the other side makes a loop. All right, so thread goes through the needle threader, which as you can see is a much bigger hole than the actual eye of the needle. Take your needle and pull the needle threader back through. And then the needle threader, all done. So now I have two strands, make a little tail, with a loop on one end 
threaded through my needle. All right, now you do want to be careful with your needle threader because they do come apart. The little leg ends here are supposed to be through here. So you can try to fix it, you can buy a new one. Um, you can also find ones that are actual pieces of like metal hook that should last longer. Or you can use it with just this part by holding on to the end. The twist is yours. Regular project, we want to start our seam two centimeters down from the top. So I'm just going to mark on both sides where two centimeters is. So we're going to start here. We're going to sew all the way down, turn the corner, turn the corner, so all the way up. We're going to leave this part free because that's going to be, we're going to hem that in one of the last steps of the project. So now we're going to do a back stitch. Now for the back stitch, we're going to go in on one side and pull the thread most of the way through so you still have your loop. Then along the same line, go down a little bit and poke up. Pull your thread all the way through and then put your needle through your loop and pull. And now we've made our first stitch and we've secured our thread. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go down a little bit more and we're going to poke our needle through, pull tight, now you don't want to pull tight enough that this happens. You want to be able to pull tight though so you don't have a lot of loose thread. Now on the back, you can see that this stitch is quite a bit further on than this one. So what we're going to do is go back through the bottom of that stitch. and pull. And then just keep repeating. Go down a little bit, pull it all the way through, and then go back, wait for the focus, and then go back, and pull it through. And just keep repeating until you get down to the corner. There we go. This is one that I made earlier. So you can see on one side, it's all the little overlapping stitches. And on the other side, it goes all the way down and then it turns the corner and it goes all the way back in one solid line. This thing is very strong. If you find that you are constantly hurting yourself by poking the end of the needle, either end of the needle, you can use the included thimble. A thimble just goes on your finger and it provides a nice hard surface for the needle to hit against. I personally, I don't like them, so you don't have to use it if you don't want to.
you get to a point where you've run out of thread to continue, just loop your needle underneath your stitches and then go through the loop both strands and pull tight. I usually do two or three knots because I feel that's the most secure. If you don't have enough material to go through the front of the needle, you can back the needle up through the loop. And now I have a knot and I'm just going to Snip. And then all I have to do to restart is thread the needle and continue from there. So as I'm stitching the corner, I'm just going to keep going until I get to my little X marks the spot. And then just go right around. Follow my line. Now in this case, following the line, oops, making sure I don't get caught on my safety pins, following the line would kind of reverse which side is my back stitch and which side is the pretty side of my back stitch. So I'm just going to go back through there and back through there again just to try and get myself back on track. And just back the way I was and just keep stitching. Don't think it will really matter which side um, ends up the pretty side and which side ends up the back side for this project, but you do want to try and keep it consistent because in some projects you will see your seam. So if you make um, small pretty stitches it will look nicer on your finished product. Now that we've finished the inner lining pocket, we're going to start on the exterior pieces for our phone case. So we're going to start with this side first, which has the pockets for uh, cards. So take one of your pieces and mark off half a centimeter around three sides.
I'm also going to measure down two centimeters from the top, just like I did on the other pocket or on the other piece. And for placement, I'm going to pretend that this is my top because this area is going to be um, a seam allowance. Take our the two squares that we have from our other size, that is 16 centimeters by the width of your project. Um, you will notice that this already has a seam. I ran out of fabric making this example, so I did have to sew together two pieces. Um, it will be fine, but you should have enough to be able to make two single piece um, pockets. Now, the first thing we're going to do with these is fold them in half lengthwise. And you can work with them like this, but if you have an iron, I highly suggest that you do iron them so that your crease is nice and stiff and stays in place. Now, when you iron, it helps to have something on the table, like a towel. I happen to have a piece of felt. So I'm putting my little folded fabrics on here. Now this is 100% cotton, so that's what I have my iron set for. And I just run it over. I like to flip them, personally. And just iron them again. Again, paying attention to the crease. And that's all we need the iron for, so you can let these cool just for a little bit. Once your pieces have cooled, you can see how I now have a nice stiff edge. Take the not fold side and measure out a half centimeter from that edge. Let's see, this is where I, this is where I was talking about having, you can measure any half centimeter. By doing it this way, I'm still measuring up a half centimeter, but now I have enough tape measure that I can hold the fabric through it. Take your straight edge. Draw your line. All right, now we need now we need this, and we are going to measure down nine centimeters from. Uh, our little mark that is two centimeters. So a total of 11 centimeters from the top. And you can put a little mark on there if you want. So it's nine centimeters. You can do nine centimeters from this side as well. We'll put it about there. And we're going to lay our piece on here so that the line that we drew on our little pocket matches up to the lines that we just marked at nine centimeters. So we're going to then, now we're going to sew straight across. Well, we're going to pin it first. So now we just pin this in place. Now 
with however many pins makes you feel comfortable. Um, again, I'm using safety pins because I like them. I don't have to worry about poking myself while I'm sewing with anything more than the needle. Oops. Right, and again, just make sure that your fabric lays nice and flat. This should be nice and even along the edges. And my lines should match up because that's where I'm going to sew my seams. Once you have your pocket stitched all the way across, take off your safety pins. Don't even bother closing them. We're going to be using them in just a moment. Fold up right at the stitch line. So you can see how I'm moving my fingers up. And now I am pinning it in place. keep it up. If you still have your iron on at this point, you can feel free to iron this seam. If not, you should be fine. Take your, put that to the side, take your second piece. And for this one, we are going to pin it right underneath. Again, with the fold side facing down. So now you can guess what's coming next. Sew along the line. We have the second pocket sewn in. We're going to do exactly the same thing that we did to the first one. In fact, this is where you can save on pins because we only need these to be kept in place while we work on the rest of the project. So we can push this up and use one pin to hold both pieces. Right, we are almost done with this panel. It's a little bit optional. We are going to add a button so that when you are wearing your case, you can button it closed. This step is slightly optional. You can choose to use Velcro, either sewn on or glued on, or you can choose not to put any, but any fastener at all. Center the bottom button right under your bottom pocket and hold it in place while you poke your needle up through one of the holes. <laughs> Ow. And yes, you will poke yourself doing this project. And then you go straight back down in the other hole. Now, in this case, I am using a very similar um, method to the loop method that we've been using so far, except that I tied a little knot 
because I'm using um, some leftover thread from a previous seam. Right, so just pull tight. And then go up through the next hole. And down again. And just keep repeating that X for a couple of crosses. Ow! All right, then flip over and slide through. And make your knots. Okay, that's enough of those. <laughs> I've marked off all of my stitching lines on my back piece. So you can see that I have my seam lines at half a centimeter in. I've marked my two places that are two centimeters down from the top. And then these three lines are going to be what stitches the felt flap on. All right, so now I am going to cut my felt. Now the felt you will have will be this length and maybe about half the width. But what we're going to do is measure from our seam allowance to our seam allowance. So in this case, I go from zero centimeters two, actually in this case it's easier to measure in inches, one line under four inches, or two millimeters less than 10 centimeters, if you want to stay in metric. So I already know that my felt wants to be this length, and it also wants to be That is not showing up. It also wants to be that long. So I did say to use a pen, never a marker, but I am using this nice Sharpie because this is a very dark felt and that's how it shows. So I am going to take, actually, I'm going to take a second measurement from the top. Make my little line. Now, felt is a very stretchy material, so you want to try not to stretch it out of shape too much as you're working with it. So what I'm going to do is just draw my line and cut. My back piece, my flap, which will fit pretty much like that, and then fold over. I also have 
my belt loop tab. This is a material called bias tape. And you can see that it is fabric that is kind of folded around. It does come this way in a packet. So this is 13 centimeters. And the first thing that we are going to do, and this is the first time we've had to work with this all, pro all project, is we're going to put right sides together. Now with the bias, with the bias tape, you can see that there's a smooth side and a side with pieces folded over. So this is what we are going to call the wrong side. On a piece of fabric, this would be the back where the pattern's not quite as visible. With the fabric we are using for the rest of the project, it's just a solid color, so there is no right or wrong side. But in this case, we're going to put right sides together, just like that, so that we make a little loop And we are going to stitch, you don't even have to measure it, but just stitch right across the edge so that it forms an actual permanent loop. To make sure that I had a nice strong seam on such a small space, I kind of went, hold it on this side so you can see it a little bit better. I went up from the middle and around and like a little figure eight and then I cut the distance in half with my next loops and just kind of weaved in and out a couple of times. So now that we've done that, we're just going to flip this right side out. And we have our band with the knot, with the seam and the knot kind of hidden inside. That we have our three components it's time to pin everything together so that we can stitch it now the first thing we're going to do is flip over our fabric piece we're going to put our felt piece five centimeters down from the top of the fabric. So it needs to go up just a little. And we want to make sure that it is centered on the fabric. So I think this needs to go over just a little bit. So we have half a centimeter, half a centimeter. And it shifted up a little, so we're just gonna pull it down, smooth it out, double check our measurements, half a centimeter, half a centimeter, and about five centimeters. Take your bias tape loop with the knot at the top and put that right in the middle of the felt so that the not knotted part is down at the bottom equal to the felt. And pin it, pin everything in place. But what you do wanna make sure is that your pins do not go exactly on your lines because that's where you're going to be stitching. All right, and one of the things that I did when I was making my first version that made it so much easier to work with is fold in the felt like that. And putting one pin 
just right on the edge. And then put another pen in this side. There we go. And that keeps the large, heavier piece of fabric away from, a, a little more contained so that you can work on everything more easily. Now, the next thing we're going to do is sew across all three, all three lines. And remember, you want the nice side of your stitches to be on the felt side. So we are going to get all of these pretty stitches and I can show you all of my knots and everything else are hidden on the inside. Once you have all three of your lines sewn, you can take out all of the pins. I would recommend leaving these pins in place just for the time being. And if you can, try not to do what I did and keep this as flat as you can. Now, we're into the home stretch just a little bit more and we'll have a completed case. We are going to take our back and we are going to take our front and we are going to put them right sides together. Now, right sides together means we are going to put the pretty side together. So it'll essentially be inside out. And we are leaving the safety pins holding the pockets in there. That's why we put them in so far so that they will not get in the way of the seams. Right, put it on and pin it up. All right, so I have my entire panel pinned. I do like a lot of pins when I'm sewing. And if we flip it over, we can see the lines that we drew earlier where we will stitch. And in this case, it does not matter um, if you which side your pretty side is, because when we're done, we're going to turn this inside out. We want to keep in mind the little marks that we made at two centimeters. We are stitching from that mark down, turning the corner, and going back up to that mark exactly the same way we stitched the lining. And as we sew, we are going to capture the edges of the pockets in that same seam. That's why we pin them instead of sewing them earlier, because we can do an all-in-one sew. So once you've stitched all the way around, you can see that it's stitched on this side as well, you can go ahead and take out all of the pins, including these two. Leave these two in for the moment. So what we're going to do next is we're going to turn this that we've just sewn into a little pocket, we're going to turn this inside out. So just kind of grip it and start maneuvering until you can flip. And then just 
Put your hand in to poke out the corners. And work at it until you realize that your really big loose stitches were not the best idea. I was hurt rushing a little bit to get this done so I could film it. So I did t make some really big stitches in certain places. That is not something that's going to happen every time. So just be aware that any big gaps like this are because I was rushing. All right, so now I have, or now we have, our almost finished foam patch. You can take out these two. Um, if you really want to worry about your corners, I completely out with your fingers. You can go ahead and use a chopstick or the eraser end of a pencil and try to put it in to um, to get it. All right, so almost done. Now we're going to take our lining and we're going to leave this inside out because that way when we put it into our case, the side without, the nice side without any seams is going to be the side that we see or that we feel. So we're going to take our lining and just kind of work it into the case. Front and back doesn't matter because our lining is identical. And we can open it up so that we can stick our hand inside. Because the corners, I can even show you the corners that we have here want to be here. Have your lining in your case. You can see we have pretty much four layers all right on top of each other. It's time to stitch our lining and our case together. And then after that, there will only be one more step before we're done. So we are going to take the out, very outside layer, so the very front, and fold it in. This is why those two centimeters that we left up at the top make such a big difference. So I'm just going to fold that in. So it's kind of folded in half. And I'm going to take the next layer, basically the outside of the lining, and I'm going to fold that as well, facing the front. So we have both sections folded in towards each other so that they are even. You may have to work at it just a little bit, but basically, once you have them lined up, you are going to do what is, what is called an overcast stitch or a whip stitch. And we're going to go around the top. Now you can do this in sections. You can fold the edge, start stitching, and then kind of fold and manipulate it as you go because we're not necessarily going to need to pin this. So we have our sides folded in. And I'm just going to come through on the very edge, through both pieces of fab of material. And I'm using my other fingers to hold this back a little. And this is where the loop method comes in handy because it makes a very nice little invisible knot. Now, what I'm going to do is come from the back 
and go through. I want all of my thread on this side. Come from the back. And pull through. So we are, this is called the overcast stitch because we are going casting over our edges. And you can see that I have not put a line, I have not measured, I'm just sewing it as even as I can along the edge. Now you don't want to go through your loop because if you see that would make it so that we'd cross on the next stitch. So I want to make sure that my thread is always to one side. Oops. All right, so I have finished sewing the front. And as you can see, I just kind of looped around and knotted on the back. Now I'm going to do the exact same thing to the back panel. I'm going to fold the liner towards the back. And I'm going to fold the back panel towards the front. And just sew all the way across. So now I have both of my sides of my lining together. I have my nice big pocket for my phone. I have, excuse me, I have my little pockets for my cards and there is enough um, depth here that you can fit cards vertically. There's only one more thing we need to do to declare this a finished product. So I'm going to take the safety pins off of my felt so I have the safety pins off of my felt I'm going to slip my phone case in here now normally you I would use my entire phone but uh, guess what I'm filming on So, phone case goes in there. And this should loosen up a little bit with use as the fabric, it's cotton, so it doesn't stretch a lot, but it will stretch a little bit. All right, fold over my flap and feel with your finger or your thumb where the button is. So I can see my button right there. So what I'm gonna do is kind of like work my hands around so that I get the point where the button is. Take my scissors and I'm gonna cut a tiny little slit, just that big, in my felt. So now, I can button it closed and when I'm hanging it from my belt carabiner not included quite yet everything is nice and secure